do a little truck camping tonight. I'm headed to a spot that's about 30 minutes from where I live, not too far, but it's gonna give me an opportunity tonight to go and test out some new winter truck camping upgrades. I've picked up a couple things that I think are gonna make sleeping in the truck during the winter time a bit more enjoyable. Tonight, I know we're supposed to get down into the 30s, so it'll be a good test of the new equipment. feels like 20 minutes it just goes up and up and up I didn't realize this close to home there was such elevation but here we are Only a minor delay here hopefully he'll let us pass him in a second we got like three miles still to go on this road. Tacoma's all parked up. I'm pretty level here, so I'm happy and gonna be sleeping pretty flat tonight. I've got a fire pit, which I wasn't anticipating, and there's even some really large logs on there that I can try and make do with. Oh, some trash too, lovely. The time is now 4.45, so the sun's going down in about 45 minutes, and I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking up some dinner and also break out the new toy. I'll show you guys what I picked up today. I know these have been like, the hottest ticket item when it comes to truck camping and van life. So I figured I'd uh, skip trying a bunch of other kind of lesser products and go right to the stuff that I know works. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen this before, it's a Mr. Buddy heater. And because of that, I also had to go pick up some canisters of propane. So I have one new one for cooking and then two of these big one pound canisters. And uh, those are gonna be used in the Mr. Buddy heater. Huh? New heat system for the truck bed. <laughs> That's gonna be great. Before it gets too dark, I should show you the uh, new addition as well to make winter sleeping a little bit better. And that is a mattress topper. I've got one here that's actually a full size mattress topper. It's a two inch and I folded it in half to uh, obviously make it a four inch mattress. And it fits just perfectly width wise on this bed with a little bit of space over here and uh, comes right to the edge over here. So that I'm hoping should keep me warmer. For dinner tonight, I'm making a chicken stew, which consists of potatoes, vegetables, chicken, chicken broth. And I'm excited. I haven't really had a stew. I figured it'd be a good time to do it with this cold weather in the middle of winter, she seemed right. Oh man, I need to clean my cast iron. Didn't do a good job last time. Oh, probably need a pot as well. Hmm, I think the cooler needs to go somewhere else. It's taking up too much room. Also, I don't think I brought a big enough pot, but we'll, we'll find out together. For this recipe, we're gonna need some chicken, potatoes, chicken broth, celery, two carrots, some thyme, some uh, uh, parsley, some flour, some butter, and a yee-haw fine southern beer. Cheers. I was gonna start this dinner, but I'm thinking I wanna use that fire pit later. And I should go get some firewood that's laying around before it gets too dark to find it. So, I'll be back. I screenshotted the 
recipe because I wasn't sure if I was gonna actually have any service out here. But first, we gotta put some butter in the pot. Veggies, the butter, and the seasoning. In. Go ahead and get this guy rolling. I really gotta get a, bu a butcher knife too, because you can see my cuts like aren't going all the way through. Just a bit annoying, and this it's because I'm using the wrong knife here. All right, so the veggies are pretty fragrant now, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some about a tablespoon of flour. Should be good there. Then we'll go ahead and add the chicken and potatoes. Wow, that's going to be a hard, and this pot's not big enough. Hopefully some of this stuff cooks down because this pot is going to be overflowing. Probably just gonna add like a couple things of thyme, nothing too crazy. Get those in there. I don't know if you're supposed to put the whole thing in. I'm just gonna put the whole thing in. It'll cook down. Probably regret that later. In she goes. Yes, sir. That should be it right there. And that is dinner. Now that the sun is starting to set behind the tree line, it's definitely getting a lot cooler out. These uh, December days are honestly pretty enjoyable so far. It's been like a nice break from the heat that we moved into Tennessee with and now it's just this really awesome camping weather. It's not super cold like it is up north up in Mass, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I would say that looks perfect. I'm gonna go ahead, shut that off, and we'll let that simmer down for a moment. Probably gonna hop into the truck bed and eat dinner, and then afterwards I might hop out, make that fire. the stew be very careful just put that uh where am i gonna put that there's nowhere in here to put that excellent home sweet home now let's check this stew out i'm i'm pretty excited it's really freaking hot but i'm pretty dang hungry it smells, it smells insane. Honestly, for what it is, pretty, pretty simple. Just chicken, chicken broth, vegetables and potatoes. I'm excited. Mm. I should have taken the stems off the time. It was pretty good. I'd give it a solid 7.3 out of 10. I think that's what it deserves. My cooking level was not great. I decided against the fire. I think what I'm gonna do is force myself to be in this truck bed and test out this new stuff. So this mattress and the heater that I got, I'm gonna force myself to sit in here and make use of those things and see how it is. Because so far, this mattress, game changer. Just having the bed and the mattress in a comfortable place to sit down anytime is <laughs> it's something simple but so great looks like we've got the main switch um, and a spot to plug in our propane so I'll grab the cylinder here and we'll just screw it on the fact that they make this whole thing swivel so that way you can screw it on super easily that's awesome what a great design all right don't hear any leaking So that's a pretty good spot there. So it looks like you push down to ignite it, hold it for 30 seconds and put it on the correct setting. All right, pretty straightforward. Uh, okay, it's lit. I'm gonna keep holding it. There it goes. 
I did go ahead and open up this back glass. So this is fresh air all right here. And wow, this thing heats up the space so fast. I'm only gonna have to run this thing for maybe two to three minutes at a time. Otherwise it's gonna get too hot in here. So that's amazing. I thought it was gonna like rip through propane and time will tell. This is great. This is, this is luxury camping right here. After only a couple minutes, this thing, it, it's already heated up the entire car. Um, let me go ahead and shut that off. And I, it is so toasty in here. I can't believe I wasn't using this before. This is amazing. Now I have to say it because there are two safety things. One, I'm actually messing up on. So one, you need to make sure that you open up some sort of uh, ventilation, whether that's a window, a screen window, or if you have one of those roof vents, that's a great option too. But you need to have some sort of fresh air coming into the canopy. Otherwise, it's going to use up all of the oxygen in the space and that could lead to carbon monoxide poisoning. So to prevent that, you definitely want to try and use a carbon monoxide detector. This little Mr. Heater Buddy uh, actually does have an internal shutoff where if it detects too much carbon monoxide, it will shut off. You you should really also have a secondary one and I honestly I left it at home I'm sorry to say uh, in my rush to get out here but I'm definitely gonna be bringing it every time from here on out and I'm also not gonna be using this while I'm sleeping for sure I'm gonna be running this happily for only a couple minutes at a time and I'll make sure that I have my ventilation going on so we're never really at risk one great thing about having this solar setup in here is that I can charge up my camera and I need to do that pretty often when it's cold out because these, uh, come on now. Don't, seriously? There we go. Sony batteries die pretty quick in the cold, so it's good to either have a lot of them or be able to charge them. And seeing as they're pretty expensive, I only have a few and I need to figure out a way to charge them. So the solar setup is clutch for that. I can just plug right in. I can even keep recording while it's charging. We only get to come here once a week. That's not very much. I'm ready for bed. That stew and that movie just knocked me out. So I'm, it's 10.30 now. Wake up in the morning, get things rolling with some breakfast and some coffee. But wow, it is so comfy in here with that new heater and this mattress. I'm just like, I could fall asleep so easily. So I'll catch you guys in the morning. Oh, good morning, folks. That was so much better. Wow. I slept so warm. I think this mattress pad is a game changer, even more than the little Mr. Heater Buddy. This mattress on here created so much insulation underneath the sleeping bag. It was amazing. Instead of being on that air mattress, that basically doesn't prevent any of the cold from transferring from the wood through the truck bed up into my body. This mattress pad was amazing. It, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited to uh, be able to camp now in the cold. And I didn't even have to use the Mr. Buddy heater all that much. I should say it is a, uh, a chilly, what is it? 34 degrees out right now with some fog. So definitely got chilly. looks like it got down to 32 last night, freezing. Um, you know, not too bad. But it is a bit chilly right now, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing rolling. So much condensation in here though tonight. There was, uh, yeah, just a lot of it. And there's some fog out this morning, which doesn't help. And this thing does not produce a dry heat. Unlike a wood stove or like a wood burning anything that would dry out the area that it's heating, this doesn't necessarily do that because it's um, like a gas heat. It doesn't really deal with this condensation the same way that a wood burning stove would. All in all, it definitely made the night much more pleasant and like this is getting comparable to a hotel room, like a small one, because I have heat. I, well, no, I guess we're not there yet. I need a bathroom, I need a sink but I can cook and I have heat and I have a place to sleep. So, and I have water. It's very important things that I now have in this truck bed, which is just so cool. It's pretty independent. And because I can, I think I'm gonna make my coffee and my breakfast in the truck bed, uh, just cause it's freezing cold outside. So I need to get this place organized so I have a place to, to do all that.
Let's go ahead and get the water going for the coffee. Just like that. I've left open uh, a little crack here, get some good ventilation going while we're cooking inside the truck. For next time, I definitely need to make a mental note to bring the CO2 monitor. And I also wanna bring out my little temperature gauge so I can tell how warm it is in here and what the humidity's at. Not to make a difference, but just to know. I think it'd be cool. Good old Folgers. Need a, uh, I don't know, maybe like, all I have is a fork that's clean. Yeah, that works. I'll do like <laughs> five or six forks worth of coffee grounds. Coffee looks ready. It's been boiling for a bit. Go ahead and shut her down. Now you have to dribble some cold water on top and that will allow the coffee grounds to settle down to the bottom. For breakfast, I'm gonna cook up, oh that's good, the cooler is still really chilly. I was a bit worried last night, but it's all good. I'm gonna go ahead and, I know, cook up a couple eggs for breakfast. Pretty stoked, great success camp trip. Um, that was really comfortable. The new upgrades definitely helped. I was surprised more at how much the mattress helped me more than the space heater did, which you would think quite the opposite. Or maybe I'm not giving enough credit to the space heater, but I mean, I didn't run it at all while I slept. I just relied on the sleeping bag and the mattress to keep me warm and it surely did. You see this condensation buildup? It's no good. I've been trying to think of ways to insulate this truck bed. Traditionally, manufacturers put like a, almost like a bass boat carpet down on the ceiling and everything, and that insulates it a bit, but also deals with the condensation really well. Uh, so I was trying to figure out maybe something I could use for that. I think using any sort of heavy carpeting material is gonna be too difficult to like get into all these creases and bends and make it stick permanently, especially in the heat of the summer. I've also seen some people use like a felt, which is obviously a lot lighter material. That could be an option. I don't know if it'd be quite as durable though. Um, and then I was also wondering like, what if, for those of who are familiar, what if I flocked it? Would that possibly give me the same benefit? Because I'm not really looking to insulate because it's not gonna do much because it's still touching the fiberglass itself. In order to insulate, you'd have to create a barrier. But I think flocking it might be kinda cool. Let me know down in the comments if uh, you have some experience with this stuff and if it could possibly be applicable for this truck bed situation. When one hand is holding the camera and you need two hands. Oh, okay, this might be disastrous. Careful now. Excellent. Yes. Bon appetit. One thing that I wish I did maybe a little different on this build out is um, giving the top some access into the drawer because right now if I wanted to grab my salt and pepper for my eggs, I'd have to hop out of the truck, open the tailgate, pull the drawer out, get the salt and pepper and do it all over so that way I can get back in the truck. and just to have some access maybe up top to get into that would be really nice. I'm thinking I could do a similar cutout like I did for the storage right up here under the bed. You know, it's just, it's a learning process. And sometimes it does take just like field testing to really see if what you built is gonna work the way you want. And that's kind of what happened there as I realized I may have done that a little different. It's not something I can't fix down the road, but uh, lesson learned there. If you guys have any uh, truck bed camper suggestions, put them down below. I'll see you all in the next one. Keep elevating. Adios.